fields, 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 fields. Lesson two. Wait, we're on that. We did lesson one. We're on lesson two, aren't we? We just did one lesson on fields, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Okay. Yogurt drink? Mm. What's that? Strawberry drink? Strawberry. Six for one euro. Six for one euro? Yeah. Good. It's a good price. going to have a look at some formulas for today. So last time we just had a small look at something simple like uh, you remember you have positive and you have negative and you have oops, hold on, you have a field that goes um, was like this wasn't it? can't draw it so well. Anyway, do you remember this picture from last time? Um, you get different fields depending on what you have. So for example, if you had only just one, that would make a different field. So what we're going to have a look at uh, for the exam, there are four fields you have to remember how to draw. So the first one, well, what are the four situations? The first one is when you have one point. So that's when you just have one point like this. The second one um, is when you have a sphere. Then you have two parallel plates and a dipole. Actually, it'd be better if I just show you the pictures. So can you write down these four names? These are the four situations. You got hot chocolate? No. Americano? Yes. Americano? And sugar. And sugar. No salt? No more. No more, okay. Right, uh, next now. Do you have this, Andy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the first picture is when you have just one point. So if it's just one negative, now actually these are, just to be clear, these are actually two different pictures, okay? So this one here on the left, this is when you have an electron, so the field goes in. And then if you have a proton, the field goes out. So there's actually two pictures here, okay? This is a point charge. They're two separate pictures, yeah. Uh, I think two because you want to remember that for negative it's going into and positive it's going out. Yeah. Got this? Yeah, if you can draw both. Okay. Next picture? Yes? So the next one. This is nearly the same. Um, the difference is the first one we did was a point, and then the next one we'll do is something like um, this. 
for example, a sphere, like a picture here. So you have many positive together in a ball. So in fact, it looks the same as the last one, really. There isn't one. <laughs> yeah. It's the same, isn't it? Now, next. Parallel plates. So, There is another interesting way to make a field. If you have a plate, something like copper for example, and you have another one here, and then you put it to a battery, you can make a field inside here, an electric field. So, the real picture looks like this. So, uh, in my picture, um, this is positive and this is negative, and there's a field going straight down, like this. This is ugly, but if you want, that's fine. Uh, this is what you would need for the exam, though. All good. Continue. Great. And the last one should look familiar. It's called a dipole. In fact, this is the one I showed you last time. This one's called a dipole. Do you know in English what this means? Uh, die. I know you know. Yes, two, yeah. So this die pole means two poles, which means uh, two positive negatives. All right, you tell me this then, Harin, English expert. <laughs> Give me another word that starts with die then. Dual. I know that's dual. Die. I want something that starts with di. Huh? Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Something that starts with D I. Uh, nice. uh no. Where D I is a prefix. Um uh, di membrane. Di Yeah, di membrane, that's a bio word, isn't it? Yeah. Um we don't usually use die so much. What do we normally use? Uh spy. Spy. So like bicycle means two wheels and then tricycle is three wheels. You know tricycle? But you know it for the little children, little babies, little tricycle, yeah. So we usually use bi, okay? But sometimes in science like in biology or in physics uh, you see die, but it's the same as bi, it means two. Okay. Right, so you can draw, I want you to draw this again so that the pictures are all together on the same page in your book.
The number is not important. Yes. Do you have class after lunch tomorrow? After lunch? Yeah. What time? Um, two to three and four to five. So you're free at three? Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Because September engineers and I were thinking about going for pizza. Oh, pizza. Mm -hmm. Ah, <laughs> uh, because I know that the pizza place at Leonard's Corner they have a 30 inch pizza. 30 inches? Uh, I'll tell you how many centimeters. <laughs> 75 centimeters. 75? Yep. Centimeters? Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wait, is diameter or Diameter, not radius. <laughs> radius is <laughs> <laughs> So we're thinking maybe we'll get one and we can share it. <laughs> How big would one slice be? It'd be pretty big, yeah. So I don't know. Um, I think and you see the pizza, they said it's 30 euros. 30, 30 divided by 5 engineers plus me, <laughs> that's 6. And what have you got, 5 here as well? Yeah, 2 euros 70. Wow. Well, maybe we're hungry and we need to get two pieces. <laughs> Anyways, what do you think? Do you want to do something like that or not? What? Would you want to join the September engineers? Yes. Maybe. Maybe? Why, all Why not? <laughs> Why only me? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they don't like September. I yeah. Don't you don't know them too much. That's okay. Anyways, um, I'll send you an email. You can then reply if you want to go. <laughs> Yeah. And um, please, please don't speak. Uh, what? Oh, a picture of the pizza, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And also, if you order the pizza for just you, one person, and if you eat the whole pizza, it's free. Oh, <laughs> it's free. If you eat the whole pizza, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Might be difficult to do. <laughs> Not maybe not. I don't. Uh, I don't think anyone here can do it. Yeah. Um. I don't think we'll do that. But we'll share it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Have you drawn this yet? So. Um. Hmm. Now, I before you write this down, let me explain something here. So you know when something um, has a height h, it has potential energy, right? What's the potential energy? Potential energy. Yeah, what is it? The formula. Mgh. Will this have the same potential energy if it's the same height? Mm. It will. So everything here is the same potential energy, right? Mm. Everything here is the same, and everything here is the same. These are called the lines of equal potential energy, or the name for it is what we call equipotential. Mm -hmm. It's where the potential energy is the same. So you need to know this word. Now you can draw that picture to help you remember the meaning of the word uh, but this is the definition.
Ja? Ja. I'll draw a picture now. This, not this picture. We can draw this if you want, but I have a better picture for you. Let me draw these <laughs> um, lines. So you can add these to the pictures you drew for me earlier. So the first picture you drew was um, the positive and the negative, wasn't it? And uh, the electric field is going out here. And here it's going in. So in blue, that would be the lines of equal potential in blue. So let me draw them here. Um, it, they actually go like circles around it, like this. Uh, you know what I mean. So if you're here, you have the same potential energy as here, or here, or here. That being on one of these circles, you have the same potential as anywhere else on the circle. So I've seen this question in the exam a couple of times where the question would say draw the electric field for blank and then it would also say as part two like this would be part one part two would be draw the equi potential Okay, the next one. Uh, what was the next one? The sphere. Wasn't this? Like this? Or negative, it could be. So, have a guess. It's the same. It's again a circle around it. Same idea. Yeah, yeah. To make it clearly different to just this, hurry in. Just one positive. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the next one? The parallel plates, wasn't it? Yeah. So. The field was going down. So the equipotential lines look like this. And please note, 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 this here is empty because the field, it stops at the edge. So you shouldn't continue the line outside because there is no field outside. So it is just until, you know, just until here. Don't, don't do that. Keep it like that. The field stops at the end. Like a blue line inside of yeah, it's horizontal as well. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. 
Um, and then the next one, next one was difficult. Positive, negative, um, like this, isn't it? Okay. Oh, right, now let's draw it in um, black. <laughs> mm. This one's hard to draw. Maybe I got the picture. Let me hope. No, I don't have the picture. Uh, it's like... Um, Hang on, now then it does something. Oh, it's like, it's like this. Oh, so ugly. No, let me draw that again. I'll draw it nicer. Right, hang on, let's try this again. One circle, then another circle that goes more to the right, then more to the right, then more. It's like pulling it, yeah. Oh, so ugly, it makes me sad. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe I should find a picture on the internet for you. Well, you have to draw this in the exam. Um, so if you drew that in the exam, that's fine. I'll give you the mark. No. Ugly, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me sh show you again. What I'm doing, uh, Grace, is first I have a normal circle, and then I have another circle, but it goes more to the right. And then I have another circle, and it goes more to the right. That they get more to the right. No? I know. The right circle is more to the left. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's so ugly. Ah. <laughs> oh, makes you sick to look at it. <laughs> Much better than mine. A little bit less. Good question. Usually the pictures I see on the internet, they don't have them overlapping. It's a good question though. Um, don't know. I'll have to Google that. I don't usually see them overlapping in diagrams. I mean, I think they could overlap, Karine, but the diagrams don't usually draw them overlapping. Continue? Yes. Right, so, um, we'll look at the example with the plates. So if you remember from earlier, if I go back to my ugly picture, Not this one. This one. You can make the electric field if you have two plates, like copper, whatever, and a uh, cell. You can make a field. So, when a current is passed through two plates, a conducting plate, separate a distance D. So, if this distance here is D, and this voltage here is V, then the strength of the electric field is equal to this formula. The voltage divided by the distance. 
It's only for the parallel plates. So if you look, if you bring the plates closer together, does the field get stronger or weaker? It gets stronger. And if you make the battery bigger, then it gets stronger as well. Yeah? Because the V is bigger. If you have a bigger V, it means a bigger field. Or if you have a smaller D, it means a bigger field. Huh? Oh, this? Well, at least this. But yes, you should. It's only for parallel plates, yeah. 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 Continue. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is when you have a point or a sphere. A charge Q will make an electric field of strength. Uh, this formula here. So when you have this situation or this situation, no, sorry, not this one. Um, where's it gone? Yeah, here. Uh, like this one here. The strength of this field here, it'll depend on how far out you are and how much charge you have here. So if you have more charge here, the field is stronger. And do you think the field will be stronger when you're close or far away? Close, yeah. So the formula is this. Now before you write it down, this Q is charge, this R is distance away from the charge, and this here is a constant which I'll give you in a minute, okay? The, um, the E0 is just a constant, and this is the value of the constant here. Um, in a moment when you write this down, I want you to tell me what the units of E0 are. Okay, uh, epsilon zero is the real name of it. Uh, but this here is a constant. And in fact, when you get your new calculator, this constant is on the calculator as constant 32. Now, again, just before you write it down, something else to say. A lot of people write this constant as just k. Not Kelvin k, a different k. Because usually when you see this, you always see this as well in the formula. So a lot of people just call this K. And K is also on the calculator, I think. Or maybe not. But it's in the formula book anyways. Okay, so um, write this down and then tell me the units for the epsilon zero. It's a point, yeah. Zero. And spherical, yeah, both, yeah, both, yeah.
Or, yeah, square, yeah. Got that? Yeah. What picture? My picture! This picture? Which picture? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was saying... Here is Q. And then here is the distance OR. And there's an uh, electric field here from the Q. How strong is this field? So the formula is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 Q over R squared. That's how strong it is, the field. That's what it, this one's for. So now we have two formulas which work for all our four situations. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Question. Mm -hmm. What? How strong is the field? It's the the and it is, it is. It gets a bit complicated because you're combining two together though. Three. We'll have a look. We'll have a look at that one maybe nearer to revision actually. Okay. Continue. It's it's a, it's a, yeah, it's the same as the point charge, but it gets complicated because the two combine together. This is something we'll look at later. It's too... Yeah, yeah. later. It's a, it's a little difficult, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah, you have to tell me what the units are for the epsilon zero. So, firstly, what's the units for the electric field strength? Do you remember? <laughs> Newtons per Coulomb. Coulomb. And this here we don't know the units, so question mark. And the Q? C. C and the R? M squared. Yeah. So the units for the epsilon zero would be Z C squared over N M, M squared. So the epsilon zero uses Coulomb squared uh, per Newton meter squared. Yeah? Okay, continue. Right, so let's see, we have one, two, yeah, two questions to have a look at.
ya. yeah. You got this, Harry? Yeah. So I'm going to draw it, but maybe you can try and draw it before I do. You can see if you picture it the same way I picture it. Got this? Yeah, what's PD? Potential difference. Potential difference, which means voltage. draw it now? Yep. So, the top plate is the positive one, the bottom plate is the negative one, and then what's the voltage? 200 volts, isn't it? So here's the field. And here's my particle, and my particle is a positive charge. So, because uh, I said it was E. Uh, yeah, I should have said it was positive. Let me just check something here. Yeah. When I say E, I mean positive, and minus E would be negative charge. Okay. You got that? Yeah. So, there's how many forces on this charge? Two. Yes, what are the two forces? Energy. Firstly, the weight, and secondly, from the field. So the total force is W plus F. And uh, Harin, what's the force for W, the weight? Um, Mg. Yes. And the for, the, for the F is QE. We did that one yesterday, uh, last time. Now we have a new formula for today, for E. What's our formula for E? Yeah, what's this one going to be? V over D. V over D. So, we know the mass, we know G, we know Q, we know V, and we know D. So now we can know the force. Now what, what did I say the mass was? What was the mass? 0 0.5 milligrams. 0.5 milli gram. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's five times ten to the minus six kilograms. Right, so this equals five times ten to the minus six times nine point eight one plus E uh, what's the charge? I think I said it was 10 power 10 E and E is 1.6 times 10 minus 19 times yeah 200 and the distance what was the distance? It was one, one centimeter. centimeter. Okay so let's type this in So I get the force 
equals 8.105 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. But I don't actually want the force. I want the acceleration. So how can I get the acceleration? F equals M A. Yeah. But you want the time. Yeah, well that's it's another step closer to getting the time. So the acceleration will be eight point one oh five times ten to the minus five over five times ten to the minus six. So the acceleration is 16.21 meters per second squared. As you said, Harim, that's not even what I want. What do I want? Time. The time. So we have U, V, A, T, S. The U, zero. The V, don't know. A, yeah. I suppose I should say minus 16.21 if it's going down. Yeah, it's gone down. The T, don't know, and the S, minus 0 0.01. And I want the T, this is what I want. So uh, what formula, let's see, S equals UT, I think? S equals UT plus a half AT squared. That's gone. Minus 0 0.01 equals minus a half so that's 8.105 t squared I got t is 0 0.035 seconds Yeah. Uh, here in the formula, S equals U. This is gone. U T plus a half A T squared. So, oh. yeah. Um. <coughs> or three hundred and fifty. No. Or thirty-five point one milli seconds, milliseconds if you want. This is a good question for the exam. It's a little bit too long for section A. It might be more part of section B. Now the reason I say it's a good question for the exam is because first um, you have to know this, then you have to know this formula, then you have to know this formula. Also, you have to change the mass into kilograms, and also you need to know Newton's formula, and also you need to know these formulas. So this makes it a good question for them to ask you in the exam because it tests actually, um, this here is fields, this here is about units, this here is from mechanics, and this here is also from mechanics, you know, so I think this is why students don't like fields in the exam, because the questions can include many different parts of the course. Okay, next example? Okay, so write this one down. I'll let you try this one before I do it. It's easier than the last one. See if you can do it.
So you have um, three protons, and then there's an electron that's two millimeters away. Drawing straw. Yes, and you would be correct because there's three E charges. Uh, so, Harine, what formula do you need to use then to get the force? The one over K. No, no, for the force. Um, no. Uh, force is QE. QE. Then you have to use the formula for E. The force. So you have to use this formula um. and you have to use the formula from today. Do you know which one to use? What? Yeah, tell me which one. What do you mean which one? Which formula? Uh, yeah. The Q is... Um, 3Q, right? Mm. Yeah. Wait one sec, actually, yeah? The Q is for the large one or is for... Three. Good question. Good question. Now, this is what Harina is asking. Which formula? The formula for E or the formula for F? For F. So what do you think it is? The formula? Mm -hmm. The Yeah. So just to be um, clear about that, these three protons, they make an electric field, correct? So in the formula, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over r squared. This is because of this. So the q here is for these three. Mm -hmm. Then your electron, the formula is f equals q e. It's a bit like f equals m a or f equals m g. The e the E, uh, sorry, the Q is for this because this is the thing that's moving. So in this formula, the Q is for the electron, and in this formula, it's for the three protons. So, and we use the part that the thing is moving. Basically, yeah, that Q is a property of what's moving. So, F, F equals QE, that will equal E for the electron times uh, E, this is for the electron. Now the formula for E, 
is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over r squared. And what's this q? Uh, three. 3e. So this will be e times 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times 3e. And what's the distance? Did I tell you? Uh, mm -hmm. 0 0.002 squared. So if I just put this in on the calculator, one point seven three times ten to the minus twenty two newtons. Mm. Yep. Do you have this calculator? Yeah. yeah. It's constant number 32. And the E is constant number 23. Oh. Which E is now? This one? Oh no, they're the same. Yeah, because uh, the, uh, a proton is an E charge and an electron is uh, a minus e, but I don't care about the minus because I don't care about the direction. I just want to know how big it is. But um, if you want, um, so he, you can say, for example, oh, this way is plus and this way is minus. So it is going to the left. So then it would, should be a minus here. But I don't care about the minus here. Is it okay or not? You don't look happy. Is it because it's raining? Nearly, Nearly, okay, good. Yeah. What part is confusing? Okay, take a minute to read it. Uh, Grace, do you know, you understand why I use this? No. No? Okay. From last class, we have the formula E equals F over Q. So that means F equals EQ. The question, I want the F. This is what I want. The question. Yeah? Okay or not okay? Yeah. And the Q is for the electron. That's E. Yeah. So, you know, E is like 1.6 times whatever. Uh, so this is okay? And this formula for E, this is the formula for today, for the E. You have two formulas for today. Yeah. Ah, here. Why Q is 3E? This Q. Ah, because this is the Q for the electron. That's moving. So, if you want a little hint here, this Q is for what's moving, and then in this formula, this Q is for what's making the field. Yeah? Can I continue? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Not nice. Yeah. Now, I was thinking of letting you work on these now. Um, this chapter, students find it difficult. Maybe you understand why. Why does your phone say no on the back? No reason. No reason? Okay. Can you get that? Yeah. 
phải không? So, if we just have a look here, I'll give you a little help. I know question one it looks really big, but it's not really big. I just break it into lots of small parts, you know. So like for example, here, look, you have one electron and one proton. Uh, what do you call that in chemistry? One electron and one proton. Uh, You're distracting me. Uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen, isn't it? One proton and one electron. It's hydrogen. That's what you have in number one. So my first question is, what is the electric field at the uh, strength of the electron? So which formula is that do you need? The electric field strength, the E. No, no, just the E. I want the E. The one over. The one over formula. Yeah, that's this one there. Now, for the next part, the force. So what's that one? That's F equals the QE, yeah. The next one, how can I get the acceleration? MA. F equals MA. You see, so I just broke it down into lots of little parts. Mm -hmm. Number two is like my example with the two plates and the particle that falls, okay? This one, you can try it. It's very difficult. That does not mean <laughs> don't try it. That means try it, okay? Um, this one here was an exam question a very long time ago. Oh. I don't think the new person who writes the exams makes it this difficult, but the last person, he wrote difficult questions in the exam. So you see, one and two are more like the new person who writes the exam. I uh, can't remember his name. John, I think. John. Uh, but <laughs> I can't don't remember his name. But this question is more like the old person who writes the exam. But I think it's good to see the exam difficulty. Yeah. What's wrong? <laughs> Not too bad, is it? It's just a little bad. Not too bad. I know, but... but <laughs> you're, now, you're now a B student. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll let you try these now. Um, also, on Monday, did you want to work on your lab reporting class? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. The handwritten or the typed report? Both. Well, is the handwritten one nearly finished? No. Oh. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Can you, get, can you get some of it done over the weekend so you can continue it in class on Monday? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Can I have a look? I looked about something I found. Um, something bad? A little. A little bad, okay. Um, can I close this now? Do you have this? Right, so just work on this for a few minutes, and if you get stuck, I can help you.